Hi, I'm Chad with Turf Organics, and today I'm going to teach you how to kill weeds in your lawn without killing your lawn. Not only am I going to teach you how to do that, but I'm going to show you what products you need, what safety gear, what mixers, and exactly how to mix these products to make sure you're killing weeds as efficiently as possible without doing any damage to the turf. Now this video is going to be true for St. Augustine grass, Zoysia grass, and Bermuda grass. Now these products I'm recommending can be used on more, but I am going to talk label rates and the, the label rates I'm talking about are only going to cover these three grasses. So the first thing you need to do before anything is really identify the weed. It's best to know what exact type of weed it is, but there's hundreds of types of weeds and you got a job, so I don't expect you to know that. Now what I can do is let's break down weeds into two main categories here. We have broadleaf weeds and we have sedge weeds. So those are the two main categories because we're going to be using different herbicides and active ingredients to target those type of weeds. But just to keep it simple, we're going to have broadleaf weeds and sedge weeds. If I recommend, if you're not exactly sure what is a sedge and what is a broadleaf, I'd recommend doing a quick search. Just type in broadleaf weeds, you'll get examples and get a good idea. Then type in sedge weeds and you'll get a good example of what type of weeds those are. Once you see it one time and see the difference, they're very different, so it will be easy to identify them in the lawn. Now the first thing you're going to need is, no, not the product, it's going to be the PPE. So you're going to have to have your protective gear on. Now you're always going to have to read the labels of every product. I'm going to give you recommendations and things like that, but I'm going to constantly be repeating, please read the labels for yourself. I've already read the labels and I'm going to recommend things, but please, it's really good to know yourself what's on the label. Also, when you're watching this video, if things have changed. You're always going to need glove, boots, glasses, pants, and long sleeves. So pretty much any product you use, you can guarantee these are going to be what you need. So you can go ahead and start out getting yourself a good pair of rubber boots. They don't have to be this tall. They can be shorter, but they need to be rubber. Again, you don't need big gloves like this, uh, but you need to definitely protect your hands. Of course, very important for your glasses, and then keep your skin as covered as much as possible when mixing and when applying. Some products, have you have to wear more PPE when mixing than applying. Highly recommend reading those labels for yourself. Now that we got that out of the way, what are you gonna spray out of, okay? It depends the size of your yard. We have a four gallon backpack sprayer and a two gallon hand pump sprayer. Um, now this is really important because these mixes Again, you're going to want to check the label, are usually only good for two to three days. So once you mix that herbicide, you're only going to be able to apply it two to three days in the lawn or else it's going to become ineffective or too effective and start damaging the turf. So you don't want to mix a four gallon backpack if you have a small yard and you're only going to use one gallon. Well, you just wasted the other three gallons of that product and trust me, these products aren't cheap, but if used properly, they're definitely affordable. Another really important thing is your mixing cup. These are big industrial mixing cups we use out in the field. Uh, obviously, these are going to be way too big for a homeowner. I'm using examples. This is great. This is probably the most common one. This is a 32 ounce cup. You don't need anything this big. That's why I went to the local hardware store. Um, I got one of these. Uh, it's okay. I don't think I think still it's a little bit too big And then I did find one of these which is one to eight ounces where you're definitely probably not gonna be using anything over eight ounces for sure Probably closer to four and that's the minimum on a lot of these my biggest recommendation would be to go to Amazon and I'm going to put a link below to get some good small mixing cups because I'll tell you what, the most important thing is here is going to be precise on your mixing. We're mixing such low rates that a little bit too much can do some damage to the turf and a little bit too less cannot be quite that effective. So we want to really, really, really hone in, make sure we're being as accurate as possible with mixing. But this is what I could find from the local hardware store. Not the biggest fan. If you're going to be doing this a lot and you're a DIY homeowner, go ahead to the Amazon link, check out those mixing cups, order them. They're not expensive. Okay, now the next thing is going to be products. I'm sure if you're looking up, there's a million products out here and I'll tell you one of the most difficult things of us being a warm season grass with St. Oxygen, Zoysia, Bermuda, there's not a lot of videos and there's not as many products for our type of grass. So it can get real confusing when you're watching videos seeing people killing dollar weed in other areas and using herbicides that work well for them but can damage our turf. And I go to a lot of lawns a day and I see that a lot people 
using too much of something or something not made for the area because they saw it in the video. So that's why this is going to target exactly what you're looking for. Now I only have two of the products but I'm going to be talking about really three main products. I'm going to add a fourth in there but there's three main products I'm a huge fan of um, that you can definitely use. I, we used a lot. I'm very comfortable and I'm very comfortable with homeowners, even first timers using these type of products and they are professional grade products but they're one of the best and most forgiving products I'm going to recommend. So you don't have to use the products I am but I'm going to teach you how to mix these type of products. So we've got the gear, we've got the sprayer, we got the mixing cups and we got the product. I'll go over exactly what these are one by one but another important thing is how do we mix? I'm sure everyone's looked at labels and seen a bunch of numbers, but they don't really know what they mean. Because all these products are going to have how many ounces per thousand square feet do you use. And for a homeowner, uh, that's just a bunch of, of gibberish, really. So I'm going to break down what this means, how you can read the label, and figure out how much you need to use yourself to treat. Because once you know these numbers, you can grab any product, read the label, and find out what you need. This is gonna make you a really effective DIYer in the lawn care game. It's gonna make your neighbors really jealous because all your neighbors are gonna have green lawns, but they're gonna have weeds in their lawn, or they're gonna be burning their lawn. You're gonna have an awesome lawn, but you're also gonna have weed free, and we're using minimal products here, guys. We're talking about spot treating, uses ounces. Most of these products you need an ounce to an ounce and a half probably to spot treat the weeds in your entire lawn even if it's 5,000 square feet or more so we're using very minimal product which is effective safe for the environment and let's use these products properly that's what's really important one not to damage your turf but also to keep our environment safe and protected because here in Florida everything we use goes into our drinking water so and I know we all want to have an awesome lawn and we can as long as we know how to use these products properly uh, we can use them safely so when you go to this, you're going to find how many fluid ounces per thousand square feet do you apply. Now with these hand sprayers or a backpack sprayer, what it's going to be is a thousand square feet is one gallon. Now, there's also a good way to double check. That's the going rate, but there's always different nozzles on these sprayers. Nozzles could spray at different flow rates. So I always highly recommend checking your gallons per minute. And what you're gonna do is, is get buckets, a five gallon, three gallon, even a one gallon bucket. That way you know how many gallons are there. You're gonna pump up your sprayer and spray into a bucket in time for one minute. One minute of spraying equals 1,000 square feet. And that 1,000 square feet is the number we need to know how many fluid ounces we're gonna use. When you pump it up, spray, put the timer on, stop when you get to 60 seconds. Once you get to one minute, see how much liquid is sprayed out of here. Again, you usually wanna do this with water. That's how you can know. Now again, the rule of thumb for backpack and hand sprayers is one gallon, per minute, a thousand square feet, but I always recommend double checking, that way you don't do harm. So now, we're gonna take, uh, all of mine are tested and that's where they're at. So we're gonna take this knowing, hey, this hand sprayer right here sprays 1,000 square feet in one minute. So when the product says now, use one ounce per thousand square feet, so we know we're using one ounce to one gallon. And then this is a two gallon backpack, so it's the simple math here times it by two there, so you're using two ounces to two gallons. So the way to find out the math of exactly how much you need per how many gallons you have when you know you're spraying one gallon per thousand square feet is you're gonna divide the number of gallons per minute. So you're gonna divide the number of gallons per how many square feet you're spraying per minute. Then what you do is times that number to the total amount of gallons you're mixing into. And that's gonna tell you how to mix. Also, I'll link the PDF with these descriptions written out. So you'll have an exact write out of everything I just went over for a reference, because it can get a little confusing and you may be frustrated right now, but I promise you, you take it slow, you do it a few times, it makes sense, especially out of the backpacks, because when we're only mixing two gallons or one gallon, the math is very, very simple. So we're not gonna be doing anything too crazy. With that formula that will be linked below, now you can take any product, find the fluid ounces, run the math on it, and figure out how much you need. Okay, so now let's get into products. What products should I use? I'm gonna go over four, three major ones I'm gonna recommend. So the first product is gonna be Avenue South. Now this is gonna be your best summertime broadleaf weed killer. It has a little bit of sedge control, not enough to kill, but enough to suppress. Uh, so it's a really good product, but this can be used in the dead heat of summer. 
This stuff's awesome and amazing. This is by far your one of the best summer weed killers that is the most effective. And again, it's very forgiving. Uh, if you mix this right, it won't see damage to the turf. It may stump the turf a little bit, but that's pretty normal. But overall, you're going to see very minimal damage to the turf and your weeds are getting torched. The next product is going to be a product called Celsius. I don't have that here. So that's going to be your spring, fall, and winter. This is really an all year round herbicide, a Celsius. Um, one, it's good to switch your herbicides up, but as well, I think that I see a lot of homeowners damaging their lawn in the summer with Celsius because they're using it in cooler temperatures and they use that same rate in the summer and do some damage. So it's good to switch up to this because Avenue South is not supposed to be applied under 55 degrees. So you legally can't use this in the winter time and you don't want to because there's a reason and it's probably it's not as effective so celsius is going to be your good spring fall and winter herbicide now and now both of those are broadleaf herbicides so those are going to get your broadleaf weeds now you're going to have sedge weeds in your yard as well so what you're going to want to use for that is dismiss nxt now you can use dismiss nxt year around this is one of the best sedge weed killers on the market for forgiveness i would put that in the middle rate category uh, but for the amount of effectiveness you get is sedge weeds are hard to kill this little mixing instruction here is awesome because they do all the mixing for you this little tip and pour so this product couldn't be easier to use is very effective and then what you're going to always want to do is mix with these is a non-ionic surfactant Okay, a surfactant is a soapy sticking agent that's gonna allow the products to stick. This is very important because you'll have a lot of weeds that are furry, waxy, and things like that. And what all of these do is these repel liquids. So when you're applying without that, you'll leave droplets and it won't be nearly as effective. Uh, because that, that weed's made to repel a liquid. And then like sedge control, sedges are very fine. It's very hard to get the liquid on the leaf blade because all these products work from the leaf blade in. So you don't want to mow your lawn and apply these herbicides. You want to treat these weeds when your lawn is nice and tall and the weeds are uh, very visible. Uh, because the more leaf blade you hit with the herbicide, the more effective it'll be. So now this surfactant will help coat that product. So you really want to use a surfactant because these products aren't cheap. Again, you're using small amounts so they are affordable but when you get out there and you're doing this you want to do it right so I recommend absolutely using a non ionic surfactant mixed in with your herbicides and last but not least here there's no label on this because it ran off is blue dot I highly recommend it especially if you're not experienced because it's nice to see because when you're spraying all these products it's gonna be totally clear going on and you can't really see how well you're getting the product so by using this blue dye and they have blue this is blue organic farmers dye is you're gonna be able to see one where your herbicides being applied but two you're gonna see how much you're spraying because you want to get a good coating but you don't want to be sitting there soaking down the weed because then you're using a lot more than that thousand per square feet or one gallon a minute you don't want to be soaking too much or you don't want to give it a little squirt and move on you want the weed to be as soaked as possible without anything excess. So you wanna get in there, soak it real nice, and get out. So this blue dye will show you, blue dye goes away in 24 to 48 hours. It, it, if it's blue organic tracer dye, it's non-staining, so it won't stain anything or anything like that. So you don't have to worry, but I highly recommend it, especially if this isn't something you commonly do. So this were the three main herbicides with the surfactant and the blue dye. Now what I'm gonna get into next is gonna be the mixing rates for these products. This is what's gonna be recommended to mix with. Now these are gonna be the recommended mixing rates for St. Augustine, Soysha, and Bermuda grass. So the first product let's talk about is Avenue South. Again, this is your broadleaf weed killer. So the, the label rate on this Avenue South, and again, everyone please read the labels for yourself. Avenue South mixing rate, the low rate is 1.1 fluid ounces, and the high rate is 1.8 fluid ounces per thousand. So what we're doing is, since we know this is a thousand, so out of this backpack, and again, I don't recommend using high rates if you're comfortable. Mid to low rates is the way to go. If you're a total novice and this is your first time, start with the low rates because what you can do is read on these products labels. Sometimes two weeks, three weeks to a month out, you can come and reapply and that's, and that's okay. In, in the lawn industry, 
not doing more is not better. Doing the right amount at the right time and being consistent is the best way. So stressing out the weeds without damaging your turf and applying two or three times over the proper amount of time from what the label rate says is the right way to go. So I'm gonna use here the low rate, for example. So it's 1.1 fluid ounces per thousand square feet. So out of all these sprayers, uh, it's gonna be 1.1 ounces per gallon. And what we're gonna do is we have a two gallon backpack, so it's 1.1 times two, 2.2. So we would use 2.2 fluid ounces into our two gallon mixer. And again, and what I will do is I'll have a PDF with all these mixing rates and instructions below as well. Uh, but be slow, get comfortable with the products before you start mixing heavier, because you'll see all these products have a range from low, uh, mid to high rates. Now the Celsius, which is gonna be a dry product, but the Celsius comes with its own mixing cup with it. And you'll be using 0.057 to 0.113 bounces per thousand. Now we're gonna move on to Dismiss and XT, our sedge control. Our sedge control is gonna be 0.234 to 0.350 fluid ounces per thousand. But let me show you the coolest thing about this dismiss right here is going to be these three lines right here. This shows you how much to mix per gallon in a backpack. So what you do is the bottom line is the low rate, the mid line is the middle rate, and the top line is the high rate. So all you do is unscrew the cap and you squeeze it to the amount you want and then you pour it right in there. So you don't even need a mixing cup. And, and that's per gallon. Again, what I will do is all these products are gonna be linked below. And so the surfactant you're gonna to wanna to use is a non-ionic surfactant, and you do that 0.25 fluid ounces per gallon. So you see, we're not really using a, a, a lot of product. And then the blue dye, use a splash. Uh, there's different, you, once you start to use the blue dye, you figure out because how much you use depends on how blue it's gonna be. Some people want it just light blue, some people like it dark blue. So just use a splash. If you want it more blue, add more. If you don't want more blue, then next time use less. So there's nothing really too scientific with the blue dye. Because again, that's just showing you where these products are being applied at. This dismiss can be mixed with either Avenue South or Celsius, not all three together. If you're having sedge and broadleaf weeds in your lawn, you don't have to make two different mixes. You can put the Avenue South in, don't use high rates. You can do low to mid rate Avenue South, low to mid rate dismiss, all in the same mix. And then you can treat broadleaf weeds and sedge weeds all with the same mix throughout your yard. That way, you're not having to worry which identify weeds, uh, which this right here is a summer power couple mix. This is awesome. I'm telling you, you're not gonna have to worry about all this stuff. You know, mix a gallon at a time, get out there, depending on how thick your lawn is, once a month, at least six to eight times a year, start treating your weeds. You're, you're gonna feel so much better because the amount of weeds that are gonna be under control, you're not gonna be worried about damaging your lawn. Uh, it's gonna be amazing because your lawn's gonna be thick and green and it's gonna be almost weed free. You're never gonna be 100% weed free, but it's gonna be almost weed free and you're gonna be really happy with it. And I'm excited for you because I know how effective this stuff's gonna work. Now, every weed is not treatable. There are wild grasses. Like you can't kill Bermuda, you can't kill crabgrass out of St. Augustine, you can't kill torpedo grass. There's some products that suppress but aren't really that effective. So my advice is, it's gonna be hard for homeowners to know what all these different weeds are. Again, watch my videos. I have some on some of these things, but what you can also do, if you're out there and you're spraying a weed two or three times and it's not dying, that's an untreatable weed. Dig it up, pull it out. If it's over a bigger area, pull it out, dig it up, resod the area. If it's just not dying, pull the weed out. That's gonna be your best way. And again, if you spray it two to three times using the proper mixes and it's not dying, it's probably untreatable. So that's a really good way to know if your weed's untreatable. But now there are also weeds that are very hard to kill. Again, I would recommend this is a little bit on the higher scale if you're a homeowner, pretty comfortable with mixing and using products, um, and you don't want to be on the safer side. You want to get out there, get your weeds killed, you get back in, not have to go out a lot more. With this mix here, the Avenue South and this Dismiss, you can mix in MSM. It's a bit of a hotter product, but like you have buttonweed, doveweed, things like that. They're pretty hard to kill. If you do two to three treatments over a consistent 
time, you know, spread, splitting your applications every three to four weeks, you will get those weeks under control, but it will take some time. If you wanna get more of a kill, you can add MSM into this mix. But again, now you're starting to get a little hot and volatile where a little bit too much can do some damage to the turf. So you wanna be really careful um, when using that mix. I recommend that for be the more experienced lawn care person. And as a homeowner, work your way up to mixing all three of these products. But the MSM label rates are gonna be 0.025 to 0.05 ounces per thousand. And again, you're gonna wanna use the low rates, mid to low rates when mixing, especially all three. Uh, always use your surfactant. But again, that's more experience. These two things are gonna work well. And then these two things in the summer are gonna work well and pretend the Celsius is here. And then the Celsius in this is gonna work really well the rest of the time. What I'm gonna show you real quick, how important it is to be precise. So here we have our mixing cup. Uh, and let's say we need to do three ounces into two gallons. So of course, we're gonna wanna find where the three ounces is. There's a mark here and there's a mark inside this cup. Uh, again, this, this one's not made for products. I'd recommend getting the one on Amazon, but it's important to be precise because I wanna show you. All right. See that? It's three ounces and a lot. This is two and a half gallons, so this is a big jug. You won't need a jug this big. But as you can see, I'm checking it out. You want to hold it up level or get down to a level desk and, and look at it. I have an extra ounce, four ounces. It's okay, as long as it's not mixed with water, to pour it back. Let's pour some back. Let's look. I'm going to hold the cup up real level in front of my face and block the camera. Still a little bit too much. This is the most important stage here, guys. I'm gonna look again. That's right on the money. That's three, maybe a little bit less. But a little bit less is gonna be okay than a little bit more. Because again, we wanna be really careful. This is probably the most important stage after you run the numbers and figure it out, which I already showed you and told you, so we've got that down. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some water and blue dye into this hand sprayer and show you about what a good coating is gonna look like on the weeds. And I'm gonna put a little bit of surfactant in there so that way you can see what it looks like when it's soapy and getting that good cover. Okay, now for example's sake here, um, I have only mixed the blue dye and the soapy surfactant, so there's actually really no chemical in here. Um, but I just wanna show you about how much you wanna soak things. And the way you would mix is you would put your products in first, then your water, and then if you have something like this, you can shake it up a bit. Nothing crazy, just a little shake. If you have a backpack, you're gonna put your backpack on, and you're gonna wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then you should be good, because putting the products in first in the water, that should really mix it all up. So you shouldn't have to go too, too crazy. But now, let's soak some weeds. Now, I don't know how well <laughs> you can see here on camera, but this is a Bermuda in my backyard. This is actually a patch of St. Augustine growing in. Um, there is actually products I could use to kill this, but we're gonna use this as a weed and example. So we like all this Bermuda, and we wanna kill this big patch of St. Augustine in here. So we're gonna pump this bad boy up. And I probably went a little hot with the blue dye, but I wanted to make sure it showed up. See, just like that. That that's that's a perfect example there. All of the weeds are there, are nice and soaked and coated. No more, no less. And we got the majority of area we wanted. Of course, we got some on the Bermuda, but that's okay because this is a selective herbicide. So this is gonna kill your weeds and not your grass. But this is a nice, good coating here. There you go. See, we got some more here. We're saying that's a weed. And good way too is tap. Oh, see, there's more. See, nice, good soaking. So what most of you are gonna be going through is gonna be St. Augustine grass here. So you're gonna be looking around. Sometimes it's hard to treat weeds, so take it slow. As you do more, you will get better. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's some light weeds in here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit this area lighter like that, nice and thin. We're gonna come up, look at that. I got a bare area of, uh, in here. So of course there's gonna be weeds.
Bare area, I can go a little thicker. Everything seems to be coated nicely. So take your time walking through your yard to see the weeds. There's no rush. You'll get better as, as it goes on. And if you miss some, it's okay. You'll come back out and, and reapply again. Not sure how well it's showing up, especially with the shade now. But I went through and treated here some of uh, what I didn't want in my Bermuda grass. And as you can see, I went through. You can see the blue spots throughout. Uh, sometimes when I found uh, smaller weed, I went you know way closer and gave it a nice spray. As you can see, but all the weeds in these areas are soaked. So this is what you're looking for. These herbicides work slow as well. These will take about two weeks to die. So take your time, watch them yellowing up and stressing. Check the label, within three to four weeks, you can come back out and reapply. Uh, so as long as they're yellowing and stressing, you're on the right path and reapply. Be patient. You have now completed the weed masterclass, okay? So you've got good weed controls to use. You know how to mix now. You know you can confidently treat weeds without damaging your lawn. Okay, I've got plenty of videos of fertilization. Fertilization is one of the easier things to get down. So now you've got the fertilization down. Most people are worried about the weeds. Well, now we've got the weeds down and we've got the weeds under control. This is an amazing step to really have an awesome lawn. And this is going to help you complete your lawn program. Start small, start slow. Build confidence. Watch the weeds die. Your lawn thicken up and get better and better as it goes. I'm really excited for everyone's lawn journey after watching this video. So I think this is a very important video and really special and what a, a lot of questions I get are about weeds, how to kill them. And I see, so, I go to so many appointments of people burning their lawns with weed controls in the summertime. I think this is a great step for all you DIYers to have one of the best lawns on the street and you can start really enjoying your lawn care because now you can make your grass green and weed free. So those are two amazing steps into having an awesome lawn. And if, if you found any this information useful please feel free to like and subscribe i appreciate the support and i hope everyone has a great rest of your day